So with today's practice, um, we weren't in pads. So we weren't on the field as long. Um, I thought it was good work. There was a red zone emphasis, of course, to, to what we did. Um, overall, I was pleased. Uh, I thought it was fairly crisp. Um, just an update on Quinn Bailey. Um, so there's two parts to the injury. He dislocated his ankle and he fractured his fibula, the smaller bone, a little further up. Um, next week, I don't have the day yet, but he'll have the ankle surgery. Um, and there's probably a good chance they just leave the fibula and let it heal. Uh, but they'll look at that. But the main, the main injury is, is the, the ankle. So he'll have that done next week. He was put on reserve injured. And then we signed the young offensive lineman we had out in camp, Colorado State, Oliver. Um, any questions? Yeah. So yesterday they took him to the hospital. They, they said it. Um, and then when I spoke with him, he was at home. It, you know, he, he sounded a little groggy, but upbeat. And, uh, you know, very quickly he'll be in the building here rehab. And, and I think that'll be good when he's around his teammates. Yeah, look, they're, they're, it's not etched in stone. We, we talk about it at the beginning of the week. It's, it's, hard to, it's, hard to, it's hard to rotate three through the first group. Um, all three of them, I thought, had a good day today. Um, we'll see how Saturday goes. Saturday, we're going to have a little bit more of a different type of practice. It's not going to be a scrimmage, but there's going to be like three phases, special teams mixed in, move the ball, if you will. Uh, and we haven't, we haven't met on that relative to the reps in the rotation. And then Sunday then, we'll map out the plan for the week leading up to um, Indianapolis. So that's kind of where we're at. Yeah, we will. Um, everyone will, I'm sure, just to see. Uh, we'll probably just, I mean, I'm, I won't watch the game. I think it's tonight. It used to be on the weekend. So, anyway, it's tonight. We'll get the film of it, and we'll look at it quickly. The officials were in last night. We had a meeting with them. We spent a lot of time with them on the really the two significant rule changes are the kickoff and then the hip drop tackle. Um, watched a lot of film with them. We have them out here. We'll have them out here. Uh, we had them today. We'll have them out here tomorrow. We'll have them out here Saturday. And... I think, I think it's really good for us, it's good for any team when you can get a full crew, uh, you know, one of our crews in the league, working with the players, talking to them about why they threw a flag out here. Um, so it's good to have the officials here. Sean, with uh, uh, any Mazurike, uh, some of these gambling suspended players the teams haven't welcomed them back. You have said you want to bring any back. Yeah, I think, look, there's good news on his front. Uh, everything in Minnesota was dropped. And then the other day, everything in Colorado. Uh, he had his conference call with the league office. And um, we fully anticipate him now joining us um, as soon as possible. And we're waiting. Uh, we're waiting on the league. But he's in great shape. We were real, really excited to hear that news. And so we anticipate happen. We, we see that happening very soon, um, and that'll be an additional player for us, and uh, and we'll be glad to have him back. So good news on that front. With him having to be away from the facility, how have you guys been able to monitor him? Like so within the framework of, of that punishment, there's communication allowed uh, from Ray. There, there, there's certain parts of the organization that can visit with him, and then, you know, part of that is the onus on him staying in shape. Um, but I know he's chomping at the bit to get back, and, I, and it sounds like it's going to happen very soon. John, kind of a coaching philosophy question. How do you decide what you sort of address in the moment mistake-wise versus, hey, we'll, we'll get into the room and we'll, we'll deal with that? Like, how do you, and is that something that evolves as you get longer? Yeah, there's this saying, you know, the highest level 
of mastery is simplicity. And, and as you do this long enough, only the expert, you know, much is wasted. A lot of energy is wasted and certain, you become a little bit more particular of what you want to correct. And then you become a little wiser as to what maybe isn't important. So me in 06, I probably was a, addressing more, but the more and more you address with a player, then pretty soon you address nothing. So that decision as to what's important or what is something I can, I can wait and catch them a little bit on film. Um, but it's an interesting, interesting um, quote. And, you know, I've been around some really good coaches that may not say a thing after a rep or may just say one thing, but I think you have to be careful about too much. And, and then with too much, there's nothing. And so that would be um, something that you, be, you, you get better at as you go. What, what are the traits you look for in a good slot corner, and how have you seen them go and show those? Well, things? look, they have, to, they have to be smart, you know, and, and they end up playing the role somewhat of a linebacker, so they've, they've got to be good in their run fits. Um, they've got to be, generally speaking, someone we feel like that can be a pressure player. Um, and I, I'd say the other thing is their short area quickness has to be an asset. And those would be a couple that stand out. Smart, quick, um, pressure player, uh, good tackler. How does he look during camp too? Good. He, he's extremely smart. He caught us on a pressure today, disguised it well. Um, you know, he's, uh, and we saw that a year ago when he, I mean, I, I kind of felt like he's one of those players that kind of took a step into his own last year, created a lot of turnovers. Um, he's got really good football instincts. And I, I, I think that, I think that is a trait that's very important because there are a lot of adjustments that take place for that player when the motion goes or leaves and, and, uh, and his fits in the run game are different than maybe the corners or, or even the safety sometimes. So, um, you know, you're looking for someone uh, who's, who's got high football IQ and, and, and good COD, uh, someone that can tackle. And, um, and then, of course, you know, you're going to play man-to-man. -man, so, you know, how does he hold up when he's covering in the slot? Um, all of those things. Yeah, I, I like where I, I – look, I've said this. I think we're seeing great competition in the back end. I think we're seeing great competition at receiver. And I, I think we're seeing real good competition at, at the running back position. And, you know, pick your player. We could talk about him. Jaleel's more confident. Javante's down 10 pounds. He looks like a completely different player. You know, last year at this time, in fairness to him, he was recovering still uh, inside of eight months of an ACL. He's, he's fully healthy now. And, and you can see it in his play. Um, I can go through, you know, all of those guys. The young back, Audric, has done well. Um, Watson, we got back, and uh, Beatty's another smart, you know, more of a joker type player. But um, I'm, I'm pleased with where that room's at. I've just seen a growth, you know, that look, when you're undrafted, I think I can play here, and then you have some success. Yeah, I, I can play here, and then, you know, in year two, it's like, man, I expect to play well here. You, you know, you, you, can, you can just feel that with him. Um, each day, there, there's something we see. He made a catch over here and earlier, and uh, he's, he's really having a good camp. And, again, he's still the first one on campus. He and then the 24-hour security guard. Who, who was here since midnight. So he's first and then Jaleel second. Um, I would say pass protection and then identification. The, the fronts and the pressure looks become a little bit more challenging, a little bit more um, difficult 
So pass protection is one. And, uh, and then I, I think ball security is one because at this level, there, there's such an emphasis of taking the ball away. Um, and then you begin to identify, you know, what type of runner are you going to be? They're, they're not all going to be the same. Um, so I do think uh, there's a change, and the, the first thing that comes to my mind is the protection. Specific to Jaleel, you know, he talked about it, and Joe Malari talked about how he had to throw in pass pro. So after a few days in pads, how has his technique work manifested in pass Good. And look, you know, this gets back to the discussion of Dulcich block and power. You know, I don't want to be in a game where he's having to fit up four times on a linebacker rush, but he's going to have to a periodically. You know, we might be in two minute offense and he's got to handle the pickup. And so um, there'll be a number of times where he's going to get a free release and he's going to be out. But it can't always be, you know, in other words, we can't have that self scout where when he's in, He's always out, you know, because you, you, they can they can then scheme that. But but I do think he certainly understands his limitations relative to his frame. And then how do you take advantage of that? You know, you want to take take on the block at the line of scrimmage where the linemen are to your right and left. You know, the deeper you take it on, the more of a two way go the rusher has. But if you can take it on early, you kind of have a he's a real smart player, you know, coming from a small school. He, he picks things up very quickly. Uh, Sean, when you do have a younger team, how important is it to have someone like Gordon Sutton in the box? Yeah, I, look, you pick, just pick a few of these guys, Singleton, Sutton. You know, I, I can name a few veteran guys. There's always a mix, and, and that mix is healthy. And the most important thing I think you can provide a young player is the veteran who's in front of them. You know, I use this example. My first NFL job in Philadelphia, Irving Fryer was one of the receivers, and he was so good at his practice habits and how he prepared that any new player, Troy Franklin, Vele, that, that came into the program is watching Cortland prepare. Um, and that can be a real plus, but it also can be a negative if you don't have that type of individual you know they we tend to model who we're following and so I think he, he's clearly one of our leaders and uh and it is fact is, is is really good for the younger players to see you know what he's doing what Tim's doing uh, Reynolds we have a few veteran receivers and, and it's it's real good when the younger players have that kind of bar to see relative to preparation um, I think it helps a lot. Thank you, guys. Thank you.